Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. We're here in the live patch. I've got a few community casts for you guys since I'm going to be out of town the next couple of days. Wanted to make sure you had content while I'm going to be away. So here we are. This is uh, Flying Taco versus Yalanala, Lizardmen versus uh, Beastmen. Very interesting matchup. I don't remember exactly who's who, but I was in chat with these guys, and they were sort of theorycrafting about some different things. So we've got the Croxagore Ancient here, and uh, his ability to give himself additional bonus versus infantry and his heavy hitting um, is going to be used to potentially counter Morker here. The Beastmen have brought Morker, so uh, let's see how he does there. We've got Sora Spears up front, a Dread Saurian, uh, some Cold One Riders, King Cohort supporting the flanks, the Cohort of uh, Huadl, very interesting choice here. Uh, the armor sundering on the Sora Spears will help, um, you know, against things like Bestigore. There aren't that many other heavily armored um, units for the Beastmen. You know, maybe they can pe catch out one of the chariots and help sunder the armor for the Spears. But, uh, yeah, I've got a couple Skink Skirmishers, and that's pretty much it for the Beastmen. Nice wide build here for Sendigores with throwing axes. I haven't been using these guys much lately, but they are definitely a staple of Beastmen play. We've also got uh, Sons of Goros here with some Poison Warhounds. Lots of Ungor Spearmen Herd with shields. New and improved with Vanguard and Stock. We've also got some Ungor Raiders. Of course, Morker, a Bray Shaman Lore of Death on a Chariot. A uh, unit of Razorgore Herds. And yeah, looks like some more Hounds and Centigore Great Weapons over on the far side. So without further ado, these guys are going to be uh, getting it into gear in terms of the skirmish phase at least. You can see some nice maneuvering here as the Centigores do get a bit of an envelopment on the uh, Lizardmen uh, formation here. Um, but that being said, obviously Lizardmen have a number of very strong defensive units, aren't really too worried about getting charged here, but a very nice kind of hit and run here on these skinks. Maybe you're going to route them off very quickly. You're just going to have to be careful not to get caught up by those uh, Saurus there, but managed to do some okay damage. Probably wasn't worth it at the end of the day. Did end up taking quite a bit of damage on those Poison Warhounds, but that does then allow him to get in here, do some skirmishing. These sk skirmishers are going to be very cost effective at fending off those Centigors of Throwing Axes, but uh, chasing with the Cold One Riders here going to be a little bit rough. These Warhounds do manage to get a hold of the Skink Skirmishers, though, and in the front line you can see a volley of throwing axes going after the Crocs Gore Ancient. Doesn't take a ton of damage, but it's going to do something. Meanwhile here, the Sons of Goros are going to charge in. They should get a reasonably decent engagement against these Cold One Riders. They will take some damage here, but they should be able to uh, win out on that engagement there. Uh, these Centigores of Throwing Axes getting pretty aggressive here, all charging in, but the Cohort of Waddle are here to support, and they are just going to be pounding in these uh, over-aggressive uh, Centigores here. Obviously, they're going to be pulling away. A Summoned Manticore as well is going to be supporting this engagement for the Lizardmen, so a uh, pretty good little uh, fend off of this nice little mobile beastman approach. That being said, Sons of Goros did pretty much pick off a unit of Cold One Riders here, took a lot of damage on those Skink Skirmishers and this other unit of Cold One Riders as well. But here, this unit of Centigores gets a little bit separated, and this Manticore is going to eat a whole bunch of them alive. Very good stuff. Manticore is great for that. Meanwhile, the frontline engagement's just about to get underway. You can see all these Sora Spears advancing to meet their. Uh, more furry counterparts, Lizardmen versus Beastmen. Always a fun time to uh, get the Beast Folk fighting each other. So yeah, we'll get a nice cinematic shot of those Spearmen clashing with each other. The uh, big ol' Ancient gonna try and push through here. Gets a nice little shoulder charge there. You can see just the overwhelming volume of fire. Ungle Raiders, of course, 90 unit models. Very strong volume of fire, even though they don't have the best AP values. The Razorgore Herd is gonna be used to do a bit of AP melee damage. And then the Throwing Axes as well, doing a great job supporting this Feral Dread Saurian gets enraged, so he can't really choose his own target. You see the Cold Blooded does pop there, so he might be able to pull through, but still kind of caught up for the time being. But oh, here's the moment we've been waiting for. The Crocs Score Ancient spots Morker, comes over here, pops his buff and starts to delete him from the game. So if we go ahead and have a look here, you're going to see that Morker, despite his regeneration, he's got decent melee defense. 45 isn't amazing, but uh, he will take significant damage here. That massive bonus versus infantry on that Croc score Ancient there, just whacking Morker in the face. 41 bonus versus infantry. And look at how much damage Morker's taking. This almost never happens. You pretty much never see Morker get sniped this hard. And this is just absolutely one-sided right now. You can see Morker's actually routing off. That monstrous strength does last quite a long time. And Morger just gets absolutely destroyed. Whoops, sorry about that little uh, mistake there. But anyway, we're moving on. 
Morker does get routed off here down below 1,000 HP. He is still going to be regenerating a bit, but the Crocscore Ancient is faster than him. 46 speed versus 39, despite the Spirit Leech and everything else. It will be a very good situation. Meanwhile, a lot of those Beastman troops coming in from the back line. And you can see, just like I mentioned, the Cohort of Waddle going to be going after that Armored Chariot. Unfortunately, it is a little bit faster than them, so it will be able to get away, but still good damage being done there to various Beastman Heroic units. You can see Manticore drops down to do more damage to Centigors. Keep those enraged Razorgore herds in check, which is great, but oh man, a beautiful spinning attack animation does more damage to Morker. He's down to only 87 HP, maybe a little more, but uh, it's very unlikely that he's going to come back at this point. He didn't fully shatter, but uh, yeah, he is definitely headed towards the, of the edge of the map with very little HP left, so unlikely to recover there. The Dreadsaurian, also still online, has tanked out a lot of damage, uh, just tanked out all the Beastman missiles and allow these Croc scores to get in, get the work done. Likewise, the Sore Spears have just been pushing through various pockets as well. We've got Skinks here, the little Skink Bro attacking these uh, Centigors in melee, very good stuff. But uh, yeah, the terror from the Feral Dreadsaurian is going to be a lot to deal with for the Beastmen in the late game here. And it does look like Morker is out of here. Uh, very unlikely to recover before the edge of the map here. Yeah, less than 300 HP. He is out. So with Morker done very quickly, and again, that almost never happens, the Lizardmen are going to start to pull a pretty decisive advantage here. I don't think he got either. Maybe he got one of his Chaos Spawn summons off, but I don't think he got the second one off. So, very good stuff. You can see a lot of Beastman units starting to have general leadership issues here. So, it's going to be an interesting fight. This is, I think, one of the better matchups for the Lizardmen. And the Beastmen, while I do think they are going to be much better in this patch, than at least than I rank them in my tier list, um, this will probably be the toughest matchup for them, I think. Even tougher than the Undead, I would say. Um, Vampire Coast and Tomb Kings actually aren't as difficult as I initially thought, um, especially with some of the recent buffs to Beastmen. Uh, Vampire Counts is still pretty tough, but I think, honestly, the Lizardmen is going to be the toughest of all, and this boy is a reason why, again, for those of you guys who don't know, he should be a hero. Croxagors, according to Loremaster of Sotek, who, uh, okay, don't eat the tree. Please, please don't eat the tree. You're clearly a carnivore. Anyway, <laughs> according to Loremaster of Sotek, who, being a Loremaster of Sotek, obviously, knows his stuff about the Lizardmen, and according to him, Croxagors do not lead armies. Uh, Nakai is a bit of an exception, and it's not so much that he leads the army, as that his army sort of follows him around. So, the Croxgore Ancient absolutely should be a hero, and even in a hero choice, he would still be an excellent pick in this matchup, specifically for absolutely destroying Morker's face, which is, uh, you know, something that I think we can all agree upon, right? Um, yeah, so... <laughs> At this point, the Lizardmen well ahead on the balance power. There's just a handful of Centigors with throwing axes here to uh, finish things out. So, yeah, we'll kind of let them do their thing in double time here as we finish things out. But, yeah, Crocscore Ancient, again, should be a hero. Still would be a great pick here. Um, and the, uh, for those of you guys, I know I'm going to harp on about this a lot until CA changes it because I think it's a pretty egregious uh, error, in my opinion. The fact that he's a lord and not a hero, but as a hero choice, he would also give you a cheaper anti-infantry option compared to, say, uh, like, you know, the, the Sora Scarvet is anti-large, and to bring either the chief or the priest up on an anti-infantry Stegodon is very expensive, and is also a big uh, target for missiles as well. This guy is a much smaller target, he does massive anti-infantry damage, still pretty good at supporting against Light Cav, evidently, but uh, yeah, the Beastmen... Just going to get pounded here by the rest of the Skinks, the, the uh, Croxagors, of course, the Ancient. Uh, not really leading the way so much as just smashing everything that the Beastmen own. But yeah, at this point, the uh, Bray Shaman gets routed off by the Cohort of Waddle there. The rest of the Beastmen units shatter, and that will be game. So a big thanks to uh, Flying Taco and Kalanala for sending that one in. Uh, Taco here, an excellent build, and I really, really like the use of that Crocscore Ancient. I do think the Feral Dreadsaurian, I mean, it, I don't think it's necessarily an ideal pick here. You're probably better going off with, uh, better off going with the, uh, like, the Thunderous one, or even just a regular um, Ancient, uh, what is it called, Stegodon? 
I think it's going to be better, but just in general, I do think the Crocs were ancients. An excellent pick here. Coco de Poitel actually ended up doing okay, even though I was a bit, bit questionable about this pick. There's not a lot of armor you have to get through here, but that elite, you know, kind of melee defense and heavy presence is definitely tough for the Beastmen to deal with. The Beastmen don't have the best anti-large AP in the world. They do have some pretty strong tools. But uh, there wasn't a ton here outside of the Centigors, and Taco did a great job of screening them out with his other troops, keeping them away from the Crocscore Ancient until he fulfilled his objective of murdering Morker. So, a very fun battle. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that one. I know I sure did. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.